fight. We'll do a tap dance. There we go. There we go. NADOC week begins today, an especially good time to acknowledge our Indigenous brothers and sisters. The Ancient of Days breathed life into this land and her peoples. From time beyond our reckoning, the Garingai people of the Enora Nation have blessed this place through their care and concern. We pay our respects to their elders and leaders, past and present, and pray for the future of their communities, particularly in this week of celebrating Aboriginal history and culture. May we walk gently and respectfully on this land. And now we come to our opening meditation. Jesus sent out 70 disciples without purse, luggage or sandals. I wonder if we find ourselves clinging to possessions we don't really need. Looking for safety by avoiding risk and bearing heavy burdens that slow us down. Perhaps Jesus asks us to travel lightly in this life for our sake, not just for his. Perhaps we really don't need that much to live a contented and purposeful life after all. For surely, true life is not found in the abundance of money and possessions. May we find our life in the love and service of God. Let us worship God and we're going to sing this lovely hymn that we've been learning over recent months, um, Let Us Build a House, and uh, perhaps some of you still haven't um, uh, got on to learning this one, but uh, it's very rhythmical and very beautiful. Let us build a house where love can dwell. Serve and teach and 
come to God in prayer. Good and compassionate God, we thank you that all are welcome in this place. And we thank you that you have made us welcome here. That your love embraces us as your children and brings us abundant life. That your love fills our souls and expands our hope for this world that your love transforms us from being focused only on our own comfort and ease and leads us instead to love and serve others. We give thanks that this is the direction, the impetus of love, never just to satisfy our own desires, but to lead us to love the world as you do. Remind us, O oh Lord, that there are always new horizons of love to which we can journey richer veins of love that we can mine, deeper oceans in which to swim. For your love is eternal and infinite, and the creative ways we can express it are also limitless. And we give you praise that the church is called to be a community of love, supporting one another and going to our world. Thank you for this local expression of your community of love here at Gordon Pimble. And we pray that we may grow in our love of you, of each other, and of our community. Praise be to you, O source of all love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, as we've sung, uh, all are welcome. So you are indeed very welcome to this place and perhaps the many who are online today. Um, we've got a pretty good number here given the, the weather, but I'm sure there are a few people who decided um, discretion is the better part of valour and have stayed uh, at home, maybe even in bed. Are you watching from in bed? Let me know. Um, I'm feeling very jealous. Um, anyway, uh, Welcome to everyone here. Nice to have Elle and Sloan with us. Uh, very nice to see you all looking all grown up there and uh, visiting from Hong Kong. And uh, Linda, I can see, and uh, just lovely to have everyone here today. Now, um, messy church. Oh, where's Jean? Jean here? Yes, I think it's your birthday this week. Is that right? Indeed, yeah, lovely. A nice little celebration for you in amongst the sadness of recent months, so uh, we celebrate with you and um, hope it's a lovely... When, what day is it, Jean? Today, even better, even better. Well, that's fantastic. Um, perhaps a celebratory cup of tea and biscuit over morning tea. Last night we had messy church, and we did, we had a good time. Uh, as you might have read in the... Um, in the newsletter, uh, we had over 50 people. Um, so uh, with, with our helpers, we had 51. Uh, and that was with three families who had committed to come and then didn't show up. 
I guess because of the rain. But we had a great time. You can see here, um, that's the, um, uh, the material that we were working with. And um, just scroll through slowly, thanks. Um, yeah, we had um, lovely people. Uh, obviously, they're all lovely, but it was just great to see people show up. We, um, people that we hadn't seen for a long time. Some people, I think, who are quite new. Um, and uh, people from um, some people who came from playgroup and uh, yeah so it was really wonderful and um, we worked hard at uh, building all sorts of goodies and so it sort of pe people were in the under fives and then six to eight seven to uh, nine to eleven anyway something like that. there were three different age groups and they made things and that's Patrick if you just go back to that one um, that's Patrick, and um, Patrick's in my Year 5 class at Gordon West, and uh, he really got in, he's been before, um, but um, really got into building uh, the little robots. So they build something and then they code it, so that th that means that they can control it from a little iPad. So all of this was there. We thank Scott for and his team for coming along. He gave us his um, time for nothing. Uh, I think his little band is called Young Engineers, and um, he's doing something else with us later on. Excellent. So he rents with us um, and he's very happy to give back. So I did ask a few people, oh, it's lovely to have you here. Why particularly tonight? You know, because we've been struggling with our numbers. And look, yeah, for many people, it was that this was a real draw card. Uh, their kids love this. And um, actually, they, they really loved it, more than I thought. So it's basically built up through Lego and, you know, you attach a, a motor or something like that. And then for the older ones, they link it to a, uh, an iPad. But um, yeah, they really loved it. And that was a great... Uh, draw card for many and some people because it was wet mean that they didn't have um, tennis on and so that they could come along and uh, for others the fact that it was in the holidays was quite helpful for them so it, it's a real struggle with uh, family ministry you know just how do you in in this sort of area where there where parents and kids are just so busy just to try to find the right thing the right time uh, to suit everyone it's not very easy, but we're, we're thankful for it. It was a great night. We want to thank uh, Di, uh, Wilkinson, and Sue, and Sue, who were in the kitchen, and uh, always very appreciative, and um, a lovely spag bowl, or more or less. Uh, spag with pasta it was lovely. So um, it's got that the wrong way around, didn't it? Penne with bolognese is what I'm trying to say. Mm. Anyway, and the traditional... Um, jelly and ice cream which always goes down well. now i've probably taken up much too much time andrew let's hear some other notices thank you steve um i think you all should pat yourself on the back for being here today well done and where's where's marge hiding marge normally has the record for coming the furthest distance to church we have a new record now, two who've come from Hong Kong, and I think we should give them a big clap to welcome them. <laughs> Lovely to see you, and I know you're having a wonderful time here. By the way, isn't this marvellous? The newsletter that Sonia produces every week. Absolutely. I don't, don't know there'd be a church with a better newsletter than this. Well done for Sonia. It collates a lot of things that people have done, like Steve and Nicola, but she does it very, very well. And if you're watching Nic uh, Sonia, thank you. A couple of things for your diary. Um, we used to do it a few years ago before that dreadful thing happened. We go and pick mandarins at the Mandarin Farm. Good fun. That's on the 13th of, the, of, of now this month. And on the 21st, the menu... Um, uh, uh, menu lunch people get together. We have our guest speaker with us. Where are you, John? He's somewhere there. He's our guest speaker. And uh, Rick, sorry, Rick. I, I actually got him mixed up this morning. I asked him, you know, uh, I, I get I get the two mixed up. But sorry, Rick. They're but uh, interchangeable. You know, they're both very short. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Confusing. And uh, extra, you know, adventure extraordinaire. So we're looking forward to you seeing you at the club, and. We're having another games afternoon. Now, remember, we had a successful one not long ago. A combined service at Pimble, lunch, then games. And that's on the 24th of, of, the, of July also. Um, you may have seen on the news how uh, Food Bank are absolutely desperate for food for charities. 
but we certainly got that with Lifeline and Exodus. I'll put a, a new list in the notices this week, but just think of wheat mix, baked beans, tin tuna, tin fruit, tin oh, packs of custard, and little things like tea and coffee. All helps. We, could, we took a load down last week and was most welcome. Keep giving. Thank you very much. Just a couple of words from me about our golden girl, Barbara, who's turning 100 very soon. And a little bit of rain doesn't stop Barbara from coming to church. Next Sunday, we're going to party on down at Roseville Club for lunch. If you'd like to come and join us, there's still room at the table. Just let me know and give me a choice. The chef has decided we might like a roast dinner, a grilled barramundi fish and chips, or a chicken and leek pot pie. So what more could you ask for for next Sunday's lunch and good company? Hope to see you there. Thank you. And that follows the service at uh, Pimble at 11, and there'll be just uh, a little cake and candles, I think, straight after the service and uh, before the lunch. So lots of celebration for you, Barbara. We look forward to that. And, um, uh, you know, she's sort of looking self-deprecating, but really it's a great achievement. Now, I uh, just wanted to say something I was thinking of. Just the, Oh, yes, what Andrew said about the 24th of July. So it's a couple of well, it's at three weeks away. One, two, three. Um, no service here at Gordon at 9.30. So we've just decided we want, would li really like to highlight the community aspects of this Games Day. Um, and so just a service at 11 o'clock at Pimble, followed by soup and, yeah, and other bit, soup and rolls for the adults and putty pies and stuff for the kids, and, uh, and then into the uh, hall for games. So uh, if that's something that interests you, I hope it will. I hope you'll come along. But just on that day only, no 9.30 service um, here. And so we'll keep saying that so that it's quite clear in the, over the coming weeks. When I was at, uh, in the mountains, I got in trouble once uh, for sort of tacking Holy Communion onto the end of the service and not making it sort of incorporated to the, for the rest of it. So uh, I'm always mindful of that as I prepare, but I'm, I don't think I've got much connection other than a song here and there. But um, let us remember that we're gathering at the Lord's table today. It's not an add-on. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, a practical expression of the grace of Jesus Christ. And so, um, and I, hopefully that permeates the rest of the service as well. Marge, thank you for our reading, our first reading. I think if I wasn't reading, I'd be one of the ones in bed. <laughs> now, first reading is from 2 Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. The healing of Naaman. Sorry, I've got watery eyes. Nothing to do with the rain. <clears throat> Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favour with his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Nathan's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, when this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. 
When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's home. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached him and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Uh, the blessing of the servants, uh, of the little ones in that story. Uh, let us uh, respond by singing, O Christ the healer, we have come. And our second reading is from Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 to 11. The mission of the 70. 
After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. You know this, the kingdom of God has come near. This is the word of the Lord. Despite my promises about preaching from the Hebrew prophets, I am diverting to the gospel today, mainly in order to be as relevant as possible. It's been a fairly difficult week for the Christian church in Australia. As you will have heard, the census results from last year reveal a large drop in the numbers of people who identify as Christians, down 9% over the last five years, and down 17% in the last 10 years. These are big numbers, and they represent a considerable slide. Now, just 44% of Australians identify as, uh, claim a Christian identity, not too far ahead of the 39% of people who state that they have no religious affiliation at all. And while the media have generally reveled in reporting this drop, there is not much that us Christians can argue. Both the numbers and the long-term trends are quite clear. The results are particularly jarring in the light of Jesus' words in today's gospel, that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. It sounds like Jesus is suggesting that there are hundreds of people out there who are just ready to knock our doors down coming in, if only we had enough people to bring them in, as it were. And so these two truths seem somewhat incongruous. Jesus' words suggesting there are plenty of people ready to march into the kingdom, and yet the decreasing numbers of people identifying with Christian faith. Yet we need a little caution, don't we? The census is only reporting if people identify with Christianity. As Anglican minister Michael Jensen responded in the Sydney Morning Herald during the week, the drop ref probably reflects nominal Christians who weren't attending church anyway. Perhaps increasingly, people are unwilling to identify with Christianity just because they attended Catholic school years ago or just because they were baptised as a child but have had no further connection with the church. The no religion box, Jensen suggests, probably represents for many that they no longer identify with one of the traditional religious groupings like their forebears did, in the sense that, you know, Irish immigrants said that they were Catholic and, and so on. And we must also return to what Jesus said. The crux of what Jesus said concerns people being open to join the kingdom of God it wasn't really about numbers in the 21st century institutional church. 
But either way, it is interesting to see what Jesus does in this passage. Earlier, you might remember, Jesus has sent out 12 apostles to share the good news. Now he sends out 70 with the same task, indicating that part of following Jesus is to have a sent mentality. The additional sending of the 70 found only in Luke signals that such going is not just the realm of the ordained leaders or gifted missionaries. Rather, part of being Christian, part of being the church, is to go and engage with those who aren't presently with us. And who is in that group? Who are we likely to meet as we're sent? There's probably plenty, but Jesus mentions two groups of people. There are the wolves that sound decidedly unwelcoming to the Christians described as lambs. And there are people of peace, those who appear to be open and hospitable to the traveling disciples. The culture of the first century meant that hospitality should have been offered for anyone traveling through an area. But I guess like us today, responding to distant overseas relatives who demand a bed for a week or two, those offering hospitality in the first century could do so happily, happily or begrudgingly. Strategically, Jesus seems to be suggesting that in our going, we start with the ones who happily welcome us, the people of peace, appreciating that there'll also be wolves that oppose us. I wonder who these people of peace are today. Some years back, an author described them as the Sheila's of the world or described a, a Sheilaism idea. In some research, the author came across a woman named Sheila who said this, I believe in God. I'm not a religious fanatic. I can't remember the last time I went to church. My faith has carried me a long way. It's Sheilaism, she said, just my own little voice. It's just try to love yourself and be gentle with yourself. And, you know, I guess take care of each other. I think he would want us to take care of each other. It's a sort of homespun wisdom with a smattering of religion. But we'd have to say that it's a little short of what Christian discipleship is, the way Jesus describes it. But someone like Sheila represents a person of peace, someone open to having discussion around the deeper things of life, about spiritual matters. I structured this sermon loosely around some simple pairings, the census and the words of Jesus about harvest, wolves and people of peace. The final pairing is what Jesus instructed his disciples to say. I'm sure there were lots of things that they said, but there were particularly two things that they were to say. Um, peace to this house and the kingdom of God has come near you. The word of peace is like a blessing. It indicates goodwill and the desire for God's shalom and wholeness to rest on the house and its people. This is where we start. Not with threats or ultimatums, not with pressure for decisions or complex theological arguments, but with peace and goodwill. Yes, Jesus indicates there may come a time when if we are rebuffed, uh, we may need to set limits and simply move on. But we begin with welcome, openness and kindness. Likewise, our interactions conclude with an announcement, the kingdom of God has come near. This statement points to the good, hopefully experienced in the visit, the healing of the sick and the gracious reception by the disciples of the hospi hospitality offered. I love that in this instance, it is not that those sent are to be hospitable, but that they are to receive the hospitality of others. Does this not provide more agency for those who are visited? Does not this make more of it a mutual exchange? That while spiritual food and physical support are being offered by the disciples, those in the households have also contributed to the whole experience. 
Perhaps the church today needs to think about its offer of hospitality, but also how it receives generous offers of support and hospitality from those presently outside its doors. Pointing to the kingdom of God, as Jesus suggests, deals with a regular concern in the church. Because aren't we often worried that we're just a good community service and that perhaps we don't distinguish our efforts with anything spiritual? We are not claiming any superiority over other groups doing excellent work, but we should be able to identify what underpins our activity. We will do well to think about relevant ways to express that. But when we offer a great Friday community service uh, centre experience, or someone comments on the wonderful welcome that they've received at a group or at Messy Church or somewhere else, we need a simple way to connect that experience with the something deeper that we talk of as God. Maybe a response could be, that's great because we want to reflect Jesus' focus on building community here in our church. Or maybe, I'm so pleased you feel welcome because we're working, we're working on showing God's welcome in everything we do. These days, it's getting more and more difficult to find words that are not cringeworthy. But if people have had a positive experience and a warm welcome, it's great if we can point to the ultimate source of our behaviour in some way. We don't need to do it every time, in every conversation, but neither should it be overlooked completely. The harvest is plentiful, says Jesus. It can feel like a cruel comment in the light of the census results in our present context in 21st century Australia. Yet other community research, such as National Church Life Survey, does point to a willingness of many Australians to discuss the deeper things of life, especially post-COVID. And many, or most Australians, have a positive perception of Jesus Christ, according to the research. So there are plenty of avenues to engage people as we are sent. And of course, we can sent, be sent staying right here. It's just our attitude in terms of how we relate to people beyond the life of the church. In the last month or so, Tuesday Conversations and Punch Discussion have both viewed and discussed the film As It Is In Heaven. Uh, you may have seen this popular movie when it was released years ago. Uh, I think it ran continuously at the Roseville Cinema for maybe almost 18 months or so. But it shows the very attractiveness of a welcoming and honest community. A tiny church choir is reinvigorated by the arrival of a world-famous conductor who retreats to a small town after a serious health scare. His passion and openness with the choir brings changes. A sense of fun and freedom soon permeate the group. Long-standing wounds are beginning to be dealt with. And while that process is sometimes painful, it leads to a far deeper sense of community. The developing joy and depth of belonging are infectious. And so soon the church choir grows with many people warmly embraced including a young disabled man, a lesbian couple, and also a victim of domestic violence is lovingly cared for. Sadly, all this joy and growth is in contrast with the church itself uh, that shrinks and contracts as the minister becomes increasingly defensive about his ministry and worried about the happy shenanigans of the choir. The minister's focus on sin and control is presented in sharp contrasts to the choir's joyfulness, joyfulness and depth of real community. Eventually, the minister sacks the new conductor, but the whole choir leaves in order to support the conductor and to continue singing together. The movie is a wonderful picture of the attractiveness and joy of community. If we can make our congregation more like that, then yes, as Jesus says, the harvest is indeed plentiful 
and we won't be able to keep people away. Amen. Let us respond to God's word as we sing, O breath of life, come sweeping through us. Let us pray. As we offer our treasure and our hearts to you, O God, may they be used to pass on the promise of hope, peace, life and community to all in need of your gifts and presence in their lives. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Let's come to God with our prayers of intercessions. Gracious God, you send us forth as bearers of your love and grace. Make your church a more welcoming and inclusive community where the free grace of Jesus is treasured and shared and unconditionally celebrated. We pray today for race relations in Australia. As we enter NADOC week, we think of the contributions of Indigenous people to this land. We thank you that Aboriginal people often remind the rest of us of a slower, more reflective approach to life, of connection with the land and the connectedness of all things. They also remind us of the importance of place and the wideness of family. We thank you for these and other gifts freely shared with us later arrivals. We pray for the complex efforts to establish a First Nations voice to Parliament and thank you for the commitment of the new government towards this end. Our greatest fear is that the process will become politicised and divisive instead of bringing our country together. So may your spirit of co cooperation 
forge a way ahead that is not merely something that everyone can live with, but will bring a new sense of vitality and unity to this nation. We also pray for the church in Australia in its many denominations, especially as it continues to be faithful and outgoing amidst greater negativity and unbelief in our community. May each congregation grow the love and welcome found at the gospel. So may you gather in your abundant harvest, O God. God, closer than our breath, in your wisdom, receive and edit our prayers and use them for that extensive purpose and pattern which is beyond our comprehension. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, we pray. Amen. As we gather at the Lord's table, let us sing this uh, short little song, You Are Holy, You Are Whole, and we'll sing it through twice. As we gather at the Lord's table, let's begin with the words of the Apostle Paul who spoke of this sacrament. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. And Paul concluded, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you celebrate the Lord's death until he comes. And so according to our Saviour's command, we set this bread and this cup apart for the Holy Supper to which he calls us. And we come to God with our prayers of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
Thanks and praise, glory and honour are rightly yours, our Lord and God, for you alone are worthy. In time beyond our dreaming, you brought forth light out of darkness, and in the love of Christ your Son, you set woman and man at the heart of your creation. And so we praise you with the faithful of every time and place, joining with choirs of angels and the whole creation in the eternal hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We thank you that you have been present in this land, nurturing the Aboriginal people through law, custom and ceremony prior to European arrival. Thank you that the same love and grace that was finally and fully revealed in Jesus Christ sustained the first peoples and gave them particular insights into God's ways. And we rejoice in the reconciling purposes of God found in the good news of Jesus for black and for white. And so, O oh God, with this bread and this cup, we do as our Saviour commands. We celebrate the reconciliation he brings. Pour out the Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Make us one with him, one with each other, and one in ministry in the world until at last we feast with him in the kingdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in your holy church, all honour and glory are yours, Father Almighty, now and for ever. Amen. I invite you to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, the bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. I invite the servers to come forward. Let us retain the elements and uh, let us eat together. Thank you.
Friends, the body of Christ, let us eat with thanksgiving. Friends, the love of Christ shed for us, let us drink with thanksgiving. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all people. As we are sent out in your name and with your love, strengthen us with the grace of this meal to do your holy work. Amen. As we conclude our service, let us sing, I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
And God the Father make you holy in his love. God the Son enrich you with his grace. God the Holy Spirit strengthen you with joy. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. Amen.